there's a couple technologies that people keep bringing up whenever they talk about Star Citizen. The main ones being the networking stuff. And there's three different pieces of technology. They're not entirely unique to Star Citizen, which I'm seeing that people are getting that misconstrued a little bit. But what makes it unique to Star Citizen is the way that they're using it and the way that they're layering them together. The first one is server meshing. So server meshing is where you have seamless transition between different servers, and you can think of them as zones. So if you have a player base, which the limit for Star Citizen, if they didn't have these multiple servers tied together with server meshing, would have just been 100 players. So traditionally, if you look at something like Planet Side or um, any MMO, there's a cap limit of how many players you can have in that area. But what's nice is Star Citizen's trying to find a way to make that more seamless without a loading screen. Right now, a lot of the stuff that Star Citizen is showing is in its demo state or proof of concept, but they have application of it in a controlled environment. And that's part of where my criticism comes from, is they don't have it on a large scale. And that's when you can really see issues popping up. So yeah, they want to use server meshing to get rid of those loading screens and also increase the player count. But how are they gonna do that? There's a number of other things they have to incorporate. That's the other two pieces of technology. The second one being PES or persistent entity streaming. This persistent entity streaming is keeping track of what players do um, throughout, the, throughout the world. So rather than having the things that you do in the space be tied to the player or disappear once all the players leave the area, they should still remain using this persistent entity streaming. So like, you can think of a couple examples like Minecraft, for instance. Like, I don't know if any of you guys have ever modded that a whole lot and used like Buildcraft or something. And you have machines running a kilometer away and then no one's in the area so it doesn't run, you don't make progress. Well, persistent entity streaming would say otherwise and it would keep it running regardless of any players being in the area. One example could be there's ship wreckage that you can find or destroy in ship battles in Star Citizen. And let's say you wanted to collect the scrap from that and sell it. Well, without persistent entity streaming, you left the zone and you wanted to come back, it wouldn't be there. But thankfully with this tech, it should be. So it could be like a, kind of a career path that you do in the game, right? Is you would fly around collecting wreckage from battles. Sounds like a cool idea. The third piece that makes up the Star Citizen's network infrastructure is the replication layer. And this involves three parties. There's the client, which is us, the servers, and then the replication layer to keep track of all those entities, the users, and stream it all to the other servers in the client. And the advantage here is if one of the servers go down, the other server should continue that connection without interrupting the gameplay. If you don't have a server available to replicate, then if you're in an instance and you're playing with a friend and you're in one of these zones and the server goes down, you two won't be able to interact. However, you'll still be able to move around in the space. Um, you also won't be able to like push any entities around or move anything because once that server comes back up and running it's gonna revert back to the state that it remembers because that's the purpose of the replication layer is to keep track of all that so the advantage there really is just preventing people from disconnecting so if you add all those three pieces together the server meshing the pes which is persistent entity streaming and a replication layer you get something that is absolutely crazy in the gaming space for network tracking of the player base on a server Right. Hello, everyone. So, let me get that out of the way. Persistent entity streaming, replication layer, and beyond. Uh, my name is Paul Reindel. I'm director for online technology, and I'm going to show you a little bit insight in our technology for persistent entity streaming and the replication layer. I thought about what's the best way to show you something about that tech. And I thought about putting some technical drawings on the, on the slides or maybe show video like we did two years ago. But really, the best way to show you how persistent entity streaming works is to give you a live demonstration. And that's what I'm going to do. All right. 
Good luck. Live demos are scary. Those things always break. So this will all be live. So please bear with me if there's any glitches. Um, so let's keep this rolling. Uh, I think I'm supposed to press the Turn button. Turn up no. a little bit. They're a bit oh, quiet. Um, before we start, a little bit, um, I just give you a little bit an overview of what you see here. Um, let me set up everything. So just based off the title of this demo, uh, seems to be on those. Sorry. So on this left side, you will about. see my client window. Technology. And on the bottom side, uh, you will see the server renderer. So for this demonstration, and I start a second client, I'm just stopping that. Sorry about that. This is live. All right. So again, on this side, you see the client. And he just logged out because I started a second client. So let's do this again. One more time. On this side, you see the server renderer, which is currently, uh, it has nothing streamed in. I'm showing a small mm. uh, demonstration level. And on this side, you see the entity graph, which is our online database. Um, that is powering what you see in persistent entity streaming, what you play since 3.18. And I also have some metrics on the screen, um, which shows the entity graph uh, worker, the requests per minute, uh, per seconds, the mutations, and you also will see uh, entities created and destroyed once I do that. That's pretty cool. All we'll right. do it live so, let's so we can see them being created. Wait for my client to come up and uh, join this level. Supposedly in that children entity tree. So the first thing that will happen when I join this level, you will see on that server everything streams in. And my client gets connected and also streams in everything on the client view. Um, what would happen on this on the behind the scenes is that my player it just a got unstowed into that chart, and we had real time created everything for this player. So you will see his body is attached to the player. You will see his mobile glass, his head with all his customizations, um, his undersuit, and then all his uh, customizations as well on the undersuit. Um, what you also see is that this got player it. just got unstowed and attached to a uh, static zone object container. And this is how our zone system works. Basically, on the server, you will see three different zones, purple, green, and red. And they, each zone comes with its own coordinate system and its own physical grid. And this is how we actually, on live, do uh, zone transitions between your ship, empty space, space station, um, or a planet. It's completely transparent. You don't notice that. But this is actually what's happening. So anyway, what I was saying was the example that they're showing there seems to be quite small and concentrated. I don't know if there's going to be um, any issues between the transitions between the two spaces. I'd like to see it in space like they're describing there, like from outside a ship to a planet. There may be a demo somewhere that shows that, but this looks like this is like one of their steps in getting into that direction. All right, let's go. When you step in or out into a ship, and this is very unique to our engine. Um, no other engine has this zone system, and that allows us to do all the amazing stuff you saw in the videos before, transitioning in and out of uh, planets and go from the smallest scope to the largest scope. Um, so everything we do in a shot, so this is like a mini level, like a mini PU level, is also persisted in this database. Um, when we create new entities in our engine, in Star Engine, those entities get pushed into our entity graph, into our online database at real time, and then from there replicated to our clients. So if I go oh, ahead really cool. and spawn a couple of plushies here, you will see they spawn, uh, they get created immediately on my entity graph and replicated on the server. 
and on the client. Um, so, so that must be the server application here. stuff. I was kind of not paying attention there. I was and you see this, the uh, <laughs> pangos I spawn in the other zone get attached to the other zone. Um, okay. And then if I go and transition one of those, they will also transition between the different zones. Ah, okay. Um, and so you can see the different zones in, within these trees. And then they get transitioned whenever you shot it across. The same works for ships or more complex entities. If I spawn uh, this buggy here, you will see this one gets created with all its attachments and it's uh, and everything. Let's see what happens when a ship it. gets translated between. And these this zones. is just my small demo level here. On live, we have up to 600,000 dynamic entities that get created for one single shard, and this is just the initial state. After two weeks, three weeks of gameplay, when you guys go in and destroy mm -hmm. stuff, spawn stuff, play around, it's, it goes in the millions of entities. Wow, um, okay. So this in itself is pretty, pretty amazing tech. Um, Man, the I next time I want to that. talk about is our streaming system. Um, most engines do stream on, stream on uh, texture or... Uh, Geometry, we actually stream entities, and we do stream persistent entities. So when I turn on the, the streaming system here, and I walk into this, uh, if, if I walk over to the red area, you will see that the purple area will stream out together with all the entities on that server. So it does not only stream out on my client, it actually streams out on that server. And when I come back in the green zone, that purple zone streams back in with all the entities in there with their full persistent state. Um, so now I have uh, a second player join. Benoit is going to join so me. So it must be for performance. So Ben, if you want to join, okay, I think we see him over there. Hey, Ben. Sorry. Peace nice. Always. All right, I'm going to spawn a couple more penguins here. Um, because the next thing I want to talk about is new technology we are right now developing and we are about to put on the tech preview for you to play. Um, and this is actually the replication layer split. And that's the big next step in our, in our great vision, obviously, as you might know. So in this demo, my okay, client and my servers, area. they are no longer directly connected. Actually, I have... Uh, a new service running here, and that is our replication service. So my client is connected to this replication service, and my server is connected to this replication service. And the replication service, its own purp the sole purpose is to get all the entities which are in the entity graph and stream them to clients and servers which are connected to. And, and what's really cool about this is uh, let's do a little experiment here. Um, I mean, you all know our game has bugs. Uh, it's, it's still alpha, and sometimes things can happen. So let's see what's happening uh, when I kill my server here. Um, so this is my server, uh, the actual console. So let's just shut it down. Okay, before he does this so th from what i was reading is in this replication state the other player can't move obviously because the server has no information to send and also the player from this perspective the guy holding the gun if he moves anything the server also can't remember that so I guess everything would shoot back to where it was if he like moves anything around or I don't even know if he can damage the guy or how that works but I imagine this is like the save state and it will revert back to that once the server connects and yes this is where you would usually see a 30k or something uh, you can see Benoit kind of froze there for a bit um, and the buggy does a bit weird stuff okay, I so can shoot those stuff. pingos but the world is really in a frozen state right now. But I didn't disconnect because I'm connected to the replication layer and not to the server anymore. Right. Uh, in the meantime, okay. I'm just starting a new server. Let's be a bit patient for it. 
should come back online in a second. There it is. Okay. And as you can see, now that the server came That's back. That's really cool because it is so annoying whenever you're playing a game and you just get booted off and then you have to reconnect and it's just, you know, you're staring at like a spinning ball or whatever it is to reconnect. Oh my gosh. This you're still connected. You just got to wait. That's nice. And you can probably still do like a limited number of stuff. Like maybe you can still check your inventory, just not move anything around or um, change your settings or whatever it is without having to restart the game. It restored the state. Yeah, that's impressive. Clappy, clappy. It, it restored the state and the simulation just continues to work uh, as 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 before. Um, so this will be, again, this is a very early tech, but this is, this is a, a great benefit of what we have with our replication layer split. But there's one more thing. Um, and let's try this thing again. I just killed my server, and I'm, I'm trying to do that again. But this time, um, we're doing something different. So let's first go in here. Um, this is my development tool. Uh, I can talk about it in a second. So let's stop that server again. And restart. Okay. Mm um, this will take a little bit. Um, I'm running this tool you see here. This is our internal development tool. Um, this tool runs the entire stack of our game on this PC. Um, this is obviously for development only, and I can do that with my small test level, um, but this really helps online devs and all people who work on the incredible complicated tech we hear to be able to develop uh, our game. And because I run everything on this PC, it's a bit slow. So let's, let's wait and see what's happening here. All right. Simulation continues. I can see Ben moving again. Hey, Ben. However, what just happened? Well, as you can see on my screen, I no longer have one server connected. I have three servers connected to this replication layer. So what you guys see here, so there's their this server is the very first version of a working server mesh. Yeah. I want to see him run between them and do stuff. They're probably going to show that. Probably. All right. So there now I'm go. going to explain right a little bin. bit how this magic works. Is because it is name. truly magic. Each server, when it came up, a furry? and the replication there realized there are three servers, yeah. we assigned different zones to those servers. And we said, OK, server one, you are the authority over the purple area. Server mm -hmm. two, you are the authority over the green area. And the last server is authoritative over the red area. Um, you can still see that those servers have all those entities replicated, but only the, the entities within their zone are actually authoritative on that server. So while I'm in this green zone at the moment, my entity is simulated on that green server and just replicated on the other server. Um, and now, as I transition between those zones, you will see that on that green server, I just lost authority, and on that purple server, I just gained authority. Um, and because it my entity was, my player was replicated on both servers, this completely uh, works seamless. Um, and again, let's do that a couple of times. You see on my client here, I don't notice anything of that. This, is, this all happens behind the scene. And this uh, doesn't work only on me. Let's turn on the, uh, the zone colors and the object, the uh, authority assignment on the client as well. Um, you can see that even entities, as they transition into the other zone, seamlessly transition to that zone. Yeah, I'm seeing right. 
And not only that, I can also interact with entities that are on the other side. So if I go on the screen zone, for example, and I shoot this, I can still shoot that purple uh, entity. And I can also just go ahead and destroy that buggy which sits on that other zone. There you go. Always fun to blow stuff up, right? All right. Um, so there's more to this. Um, the first thing I will do, let's spawn a fresh buggy. I just destroyed my old one. Um, when I go into this buggy, I will become part of the aggregate. And that means that now my buggy and myself will transition authority together. And this is how we make sure that my player, while he's driving this buggy, is always authoritative on the same server. So you can see, as I drive around with this buggy between the zones, I will switch between the different servers. Mm. All right. Um, but there's more to this. So remember when I turned on the streaming earlier? The same streaming mechanics work here as well. Like, obviously, in this example right now, you can see all those servers, they have all those entities replicated. And it's a little bit wasteful, because you have three servers all need to replicate all those entities. Um, right. And that's where streaming come into play. I can turn on streaming here, and you will see that suddenly my purple server no longer has the red area streamed in. And the red server no longer has the purple area streamed in. Um, so let's see what's happened yeah. when I drive my, my buggy be smart about uh, it so backwards they don't waste into, that red, uh, into the red zone. What happens on that purple server? Um, and I just disappear. So right now, on this server, there's only Benoit replicated. And Benoit, if you come, come to me over in the red area, you will see that now on this server, there's no client at all. And in theory, we could now completely stream out the entire area on that server, or stream in a new area. And you will also see, as I drive back into the green area, I will magically uh, reappear on that purple server. And this obviously works on, uh, on, on the other side as well. Uh, let's get a couple more player join. I have a, a couple more QA oh, cool. in the back, so you can just see the whole thing uh, running at live. Uh, running in live with, with a bit more uh, things going on. So if they're able to do it with a buggy going out of this buggy. between those zones, and probably just do everything else, ship. More and you will see on each server renderer which clients are currently replicated on those servers, and which clients are actually authoritative mm. on those servers. And you can see this: the green server, because it's the middle one, has most entities replicated. Um, and then you can see this purple one at the moment only has one one uh, one client replicated. Yeah. So yes, this is pretty much it. I hope I hope you guys guys enjoyed this. Um, it has been a long time to come to this point, and I can't. I just can't put in words how much tech and work we had to put into this. Big shout outs to the network team, big shout outs to the online services team, big shout outs to Chris to let us doing this. It's been a really long journey to get to this point. Uh, and I've got to say, the team has done an amazing job They've been working diligently for the last four, five years. We've had a couple of false starts. We finally have an incredible, I mean, the way the replication layer works and how we can spin up servers and down and keep the state constant, even if a server goes down, is, I think, a genius design. Yeah. And the first time I saw this, <laughs> about three weeks ago, working fully, I cried. 
It's like giving birth. We did it! Uh, <laughs> and we wouldn't have been able to do this and work on this kind of tech without all your support. That's right. Uh, you guys and guys allowing us to take the time to do it right, to really build it. So thank you. Thank you, guys. So much for everyone, and thank you, everyone at CIG. Very cool. Wow, so he also brought up another good point I didn't even think about is because they can spin up and close those servers so quickly like he was showing in the different zones. Let's see if they got a picture of it. Wherever it was, but oh, like this. So rather than having them all rendered, they could drop off one of these if it crashes or um, they had get a bunch of errors in that zone and it's slowing everything down. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I think this technology, it's something maybe they could consider selling off to other companies. I mean, that's pretty powerful stuff and they've done a lot of work behind it. Um, I want to see it work in the MMO space. Like, I mean, why doesn't World of Warcraft or something use it? Those servers, I mean, you got like a hundred plus servers all split apart and you can't see one another. But they do the shared server locations in like cities, but then outside of that they can't do it because they don't have the ability to server mesh and do all this replication that they need. So, Star Citizen has something special here.